sir. Yes, about, apprentice? About the welders. They're, uh, they're not performing the quality welds that we need. What the heck? How long is it going to take to train these guys? I, they're trying their best. What, do I need freaking laser beams on the welders now? Did somebody say lasers? Ten minutes. I can train them. Ooh. For the first time in November, we got to use the IPG Photonics Light Weld XR. And this is a 1500 watt fiber laser welding machine. Their largest one is 2000 watts. And they said that the 2000 watts will actually penetrate 100% 3 8 If you take two pieces of 3 8 plate and you put them up together and you run down that seam, it'll actually start coming out the backside. 60% more penetration than traditional MIG welding. You have two different sets of consumables for this. You have a short spacer and a long spacer. One is for aluminum and, and the other would be for hard wires like stainless steel and carbon. The focal point of that laser is different for aluminum versus hard plate like uh, carbon or steel. You have all these different tips or nozzles. So it's real easy to go from welding to laser cleaning by taking the weld nozzle out and then simply inserting this and changing a program on the, on the power base. You have to keep contact with the, the gun, the tip of the gun, to the workpiece, and you have a small strap that actually goes on your part. It's not a ground strap, it's a continuity strap. So once it reads that there's a circuit available, then it would allow the laser to fire. There's a lot of safety precautions that go along with this. Up to 200 yards, 200 or 220 yards, it could still damage someone's retinas. We do have a 10 by 10 laser safe room, but it's not really conducive for my shop because how am I gonna fit our larger parts and our table inside this small laser safety room? My protocol for my shop is that the, the door is closed and locked, the dogs are put away in the office, and whoever's in the shop needs to be here with their 1075 nanometer rated laser safety glasses on. Like that. Yeah. Coolero. <laughs> right. The cool guy. So is it not dangerous to just hold it like right now? No, because we don't have our continuity strap here and it's not touching metal to, cre com to complete that circuit. Dummy proof. So we have some consumables. These are lenses, right? So you would take this housing off and then there's that lens cover. And what happens is if you're welding a reflective material like aluminum and you have it at a 90 degree angle, then that laser can backfire in. And what this is doing is filtering that laser out so it doesn't damage the fiber optic. So we have several different size tips. This one would be like down inside a tight corner. This would be for like an outside edge of like thicker material. Basically, once the machine's firing and you have it in the correct position, you're just the dumb human holding the trigger buttons to make sure that the laser's firing. You're carrying the weight of the torch and the wire actually pushes the torch the speed it wants to move. You don't have to run wire. <laughs> You serious? I've been told from IPG the only reason they started really running wire is because traditionally you consider that fillet weld part of the strength of your weld. If I stack two pieces of 1 8 inch plate on top of this table on top of one another and I go to welding and it's at 1500 watts, it's going to weld it through both pieces and stick to the table, right? Because <laughs> it's quarter inch penetration. It doesn't care whether it's got wire or not. So if you have the torch angle at the proper you know, angle to your workpiece and you're doing a lap weld, and it's going through both pieces of material, the fusion is so much more that really the only reason the weld wire there is for aesthetics. This all sounds really exciting and I wanna jump in. Can you teach me how to set it up? They make setup very easy. You have your wire feeder here. You basically just program the speed that you want the wire set at. It has a, a wire drawback so you don't have to trim it every time by bumping it. You can draw the wire back in. You can run up to 060 size wire on that. We've only been running 045 so far. As far as setting the machine, it's super easy. All these programs are already in the machine. Say that I'm going to be doing wire welding, right? And we have mild steel. Then it tells you what gas to use, what wire alloy to use, the wire diameter, right? And then it tells you program A5. You would just simply go to A5 and then you would select the wattage according to how thick your material is. Right now we got 11 gauge, which is close to 120, right? So it's miles still, 1,000 watts. Crank this guy up to 1,000. and That's then we're beefy. Ready. Yeah, it still has 500 more watts available. They have two different kinds of gases. You got straight argon that you're gonna use for aluminum, mm -hmm. and then everything else you use nitrogen for. The only reason they used argon is because during testing when they were welding aluminum, they had microscopic inclusions by using nitrogen. So if you're in aerospace and you're gonna have that kind of finite welding, then you would definitely want to use 
argon, but for the most part, we're just gonna be using nitrogen because nothing we weld is that specific. Okay. Basically what we have is a two trigger system. This one is the first trigger that you would set down onto the workpiece and pull, right? That's the gas start going. When the green light is going, that's saying that it has the continuity and you can go ahead and pull the trigger and start welding. We're not gonna do that quite yet, so. Not um, yet. This needs to be in parallel line with your workpiece, right? And then you're gonna hold this off to a 45 degree angle like you would to be in the apex of anything, right? And once you start welding, yeah. Once you start welding, then it's gonna start pushing you the speed it wants to go. You have to remain holding both triggers down once it fires. Okay. And you're gonna allow it to push you back. All righty. So we're gonna do one. Okay, is everybody covered? Yes, sir. All the way off the plate. There you go. So this particular belt, let's see. Whoa. There's so much penetration at a thousand watts, it's welding it through to the table. <laughs> That's crazy. How hot is it? Is it super hot too? It's not super hot. What? Wow. All right, continuity, and we're gonna just go. That does not look like it's doing it. Your angle, look at your angle here. You have to have the angle parallel to the plate. Okay. Just go ahead and continue welding from here. Okay, yep. eyeballs. Yep. All right, so it's just the torch angle. All right. Not a big deal, right? Not, not, yeah. It's a lot to remember the first time you use it. So, so wants to be parallel to the plate, wants to be at your apex, 45 degree. You don't want to push down on the torch too hard because it's going to affect the wire coming out. Once it's set properly, you're just holding the triggers and letting it do the rest of the work. Yeah, uh, I, it, yes. When the continuity is red, the green light will uh, flash, and then you're ready to weld. That's the end user section. That's, that's the type of weld they'd get on 11 gauge carbon without any special type of settings, which is not a horrible weld at all. I like the sound it makes. It's really disappointing it doesn't go. It didn't break. Everybody is always saying, let's see the bend test. So we got to use this technology for the first time at Fabtech and I just had an aha moment. Like I have to be the first person to have this in my area. What do you say to the people that say it's cheating? It's a tool to my disposal that I'm gonna take advantage of. I don't think it's cheating. What goes with that also is that, oh, that machine's gonna take my job away. No, be in front of that machine. Be the bad laser welder that you can be and be ahead of it and then make yourself valuable. Don't get me wrong, it's not a solve all for everything, you know? One of the problems that it has is the way the laser's designed, the laser's always pointing away from you. So it wants you to drag everything. If you're trying to get up in a roll cage with a bunch of bars and stuff, you know, it's, it's not gonna be a great match for that. This, this backbone right here pretty much wants to be in parallel with your workpiece. So imagine going around a weld, you have to have that parallel to your workpiece, but then you also have to keep your 45 degree angle to hit the apex properly. How long, in your opinion, do you think it would take a person learning how to MIG weld or TIG weld to this quality? Take quite some time. You were pretty hard on my friend and beat him up pretty good, but he stood the test of the trial and from an employer or manufacturing standpoint, you know, being able to teach somebody how to do this in 10 or 15 minutes after they go through all the safety training mm -hmm. is pretty invaluable, I think. I think so too. Hope you learned something, and now seeing is believing. I believe it. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>